it ain't about tomorrow, it ain't about the next day, it's about right now. We're not worried about what's going to happen after this. We got to take care of business right now, start with the first quarter. Everybody do their jobs, we're going to do, it's going to take care of itself. Celtics do not want to let down, they want to close the series out today and advance to the second round. But they're here in front of another sellout crowd, hoping that the Miami Heat can avoid elimination. Nobody wants to sweep on their home floor as we look at the Eastern Conference brackets. Both Chicago and Milwaukee, important game three victories to keep their hopes alive. Charlotte in the same predicament that Miami faces down 0-3. Good afternoon, everyone, along with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Green on hand, Lisa Salters with us as well as we welcome you to game four of this series. And all season long, Mark, the Boston Celtics, they won 50 games, but there were legitimate concerns and doubts about whether they could contend for a championship. All of a sudden, the playoffs start, three impressive victories. Do we have to start rethinking that this team could be a very difficult out? Well, I certainly think so. Early on in the season and during the course of the season, struggled at times. Give them credit. They found their swagger. All of a sudden, the big three playing like they expected to be playing when it mattered most. Kevin Garnett taking advantage of the mismatch on the block. Turnaround jump shot, giving them a post present. Those guys doing exactly what they do. Ray Allen, when it matters most, moving without the basketball, putting them in position to catch and knock down shots. Two guys of the three. And then Paul Pierce, put the ball in your best player's hand. Talk about recognition. Taking a look at the clock, look at the eyes. The eyes don't lie. Now it's time to dance. Make a play. Time and time again, the big three has not only shown up, but showed out. They want their opponent, the Miami Heat. They certainly know that no team has ever come back from being down 0-3 in an NBA playoff series to win, but also crushing defeats. They got blown out in game two and just heartbreaking in game three. As a coach, how do you get them fired up to be competitive and fight today? Well, in between games three and four, you have about 36 hours to rebuild your belief in each other, in yourselves, and in what you decide to do as a coach. I think they've done that. I would be shocked if they didn't come out and play very, very hard here tonight. Eric Spolster said their best wins this season came after their toughest losses. Can't get any tougher than what happened in game three. We look at the starting lineups presented by Taco Bell. And a starting five, all impressive in that game three victory led by Paul Pierce with 32 and, of course, the game winner. And for the Miami Heat, they had a lot of good help. Dwayne Wade did, especially from the bench, and Michael Beasley in the fourth quarter. They'll need more help to continue their season here this afternoon. So we're set to go. The odds for the Miami Heat so difficult, but... Eric Spolster says we're not thinking about history. We're thinking about winning one game, and we can handle that. Wade started off so strong the other night, had that strange path that he couldn't finish, but says he's okay and ready to go. Beasley's first shot of the afternoon. And just like in game three, Miami goes to Wade in the post. He draws the big double team and the rotation was good. Beasley was left with a contested 20-footer. I like the mindset of, of, of the Heat. It's not about winning four games. It's about winning the one in front of you. So take one at a time. Garnett takes his first shot and puts that one in. That was, again, so impressive about the Celtics the other day that the big three all look like the big three of old. They've had their ups and downs this year, but all three of them played sharp. And I know that's a fresh welcome sight for Doc Rivers because there have been times during the course of this season that the big three looked old. Rondo back to Allen, fires away, in and out. Allen has been unbelievable the last two games, 25 points in each. Beasley to Arroyo, back to Richardson, open three, knocks that down. And Mike, I don't think it should be the Celtics' big three anymore. You have to put Rondo in there somewhere, whether it's the big four or... But you have to recognize just what his accomplishments are. Yeah, you're absolutely right. In many ways, he can be the most indispensable player. He's been averaging a ton of minutes, almost 41 a game in the first season. And he was superb the other day as well. O'Neal thought he got hit. You make a good point, and I agree with you because, like you said the other day, he's been their best player all season long. Wade on the drive, the reach in, and the foul. All right, so we'll switch it to the big four. Rondo 
You see his scoring, but that's during the regular season. He was fourth in the NBA in assists and first in steals. He just had a superb regular season by far his best. He just keeps getting better and better. That's what I like about you. If I would have said it, we'd had to wait till the next game for there to be a, a, a graphic. You say it, and it's done within seconds. Well, I, I gave my heads up where I was going. <laughs> it's called intimidation. O'Neal, brought it by Perkins. O'Neal uh, has just been brutal shooting the ball. 5 of 31. Perkins a big part of it. Quentin Richardson, 2 for 2 from downtown. And the same spot. Well, I like what that set is. Two guys putting the ball on the floor looking to make a play. First O'Neal and then Beach. Rondo calls for travel. And of course for Miami, not that you don't want to you obviously you want to get a good start to every game, but when you're down 0-3, you don't want to fall behind early because that could be so difficult mentally to try and overcome in that type of a series. So as players, you begin to think, okay, well, it's vacation time, and you let your guards down, so you want to immediately have an impact on the ball game right away. Block shot from Garnett, a late whistle, and now a goaltend. First, the Heat were very upset, and then Doc Rivers now doesn't like the call. Hard to tell if the ball hit the backboard first from our, our angle. It didn't hit the backboard, but that's a goaltender. And I'm going to say this. I never, ever was concerned when an official blew his whistle late. It, it doesn't matter if it's late or on time. Just get the call right. If it takes a while to process it, so be it. Garnett did get it before it hit the backboard. That was pretty close, says... Pierce draws the foul. Michael Beasley picks up his first. You see how Beasley responds. Danny played very well in the fourth quarter. Had a quiet game up until then. And that was one of the real positives for the Heat in that very difficult loss. Pierce trying to get by Richardson. Good help from Beasley and a turnover. Arroyo on the drive. Scoop layup. Won't go. And Rondo quickly comes the other way. Ray Allen the drive. Inside to Perkins. And Perkins is hit. So first free throws of the afternoon. As Wade picks up his first. And in the offseason to me, Perkins has got to work on being able to catch the ball off penetration and get up quicker into his move versus drop the ball to gather because some of these plays should result in three-point play opportunity. Perkins didn't score in game three, but he did have 12 rebounds, including four offensive rebounds. But Perkins is one that he was saying after the game three victory, that's more like the Celtics. We played Celtics defense, actually said it after game two. We played Celtics defense and our star players are starting to play like star players. And more importantly, other guys are fulfilling their role. So it's a complete package. Everybody is doing their job. And I also think Doc Rivers should be given credit as Wade drives to the hoop and scores. I like his rotation that he settled on. I think Tony Allen right now is a superior guy coming off of the bench than some of their other options. I like him playing as the backup point guard as well. And I like Big Baby. Davis being the first guy, first big man off the bench. And Eric Sposa's got to like the way his heat has come out. They are fighting right from the start. A quick eight-point lead. Four minutes into the game. Wade. Beasley on the drive and finish. And the Heat with a double-figure lead already. I think they've come to play this afternoon. And you love the way that Beasley has shown up. Putting the ball on the floor, looking to make plays absolutely in an attack mode. Eric Sposa said he wasn't concerned. He really felt his team was going to come out and battle despite the long odds. They've shown that so far. And this is the Beasley that they drafted. A guy that can knock down the shot, but also put the ball on the floor and finish over Biggs. Outstanding start for the Miami Heat. jumped out to an early 12-2 lead over the Celtics before the Heat even came out onto 
the floor this afternoon. Eric Spolstra showed his players a motivational video that he had made using video from the documentary, the Muhammad Ali documentary, When We Were Kings. It was about Ali's fight with George Foreman. Ali was undersized, very much the underdog. Spolstra's message, hey guys, that's the situation we're in right now. Take a listen. Okay. Ali couldn't figure him out. You know, Foreman had so much power, and it was just, it was just so much more uh, than him at that point in his career uh, that he had to figure it out some other way. And he came up, that was the rope-a-dope, okay? You can draw some conclusions, okay, and some similarities. I'm not saying we have to come up with a rope-a-dope. However, come on, it's been five straight, or five games in the fourth quarter where we just have not been able to close them, and that's where we're at our best. Spoles for telling his guys, we don't have to get four games today, guys. We can't, but we got to get this one, and we got to finally figure the Celtics out. Mike? Well, at least they're not throwing a rope-a-dope. They're throwing a left hook to start. As Pierce's shot is good. Pierce knocks down a three. You know, I'm a big boxing fan, so allow me to take this, fella. <laughs> when you talk about Ali against Foreman, Ali had more than one weapon to counter Foreman's arsenal. That's the problem with the Heat. They need more than just Dwayne Wade. Other guys have got to step up to counter this Celtic team. Well, Clinton Richardson certainly has to start three for three from downtown, four for four overall. He's got 11 points already. He had five points in game three. Garnett travels. That's already five turnovers for Boston. Well, Miami's playing the type of defense that they're capable of. They are swarming. And even on the three that Pierce got, it was a well-defended possession. All they needed to do was hit the floor for a loose ball. During the regular season, Miami's defense, one of the best in the NBA. Richardson again gets inside, misses. And again, Rondo quickly brings it up the floor. Good transition defense from the Heat. Drives on Beasley. Nice play from Kevin Garnett for his second field goal. You know, Roger Armando was saying after game three, one of the reasons the Celtics better be ready is because this series has been closer than 03 as Arroyo knocks it down. Remember, in game one, they were up 14 in the third quarter. They certainly could have won game three. It came down to Wade missed and Pierce hit. End of story. So even though it's a 3-0 series, it's actually been a little more competitive than that. The game two was the blowout. Going to be a foul. Nope. Uh, defensive three seconds. Defensive All against Jermaine O'Neal. So a one-shot technical. Well, it could have not have drawn up a better start for the Miami Heat as O'Neal gets an explanation from Billy Kennedy. Here's Ray Allen, 25 points in game two, 25 in game three. Pierce hit the game winner, but Allen hit a huge three late in the fourth quarter. And as you see, the Heat have gotten off to good starts throughout the series. It's part of the rest of the game that's been the problem. I don't think they should have to shoot the free throw on a technical. It should just be a point. <laughs> Yeah, why should you have to shoot the free throw? You're calling an infraction on the other team. Because when they call holding in football, they make them kick a field goal to get the penalty? Rondo, as the shot clock expires, this is a new uh, one. No, new I really one. did. I, I, it also speeds up the game. Just give them a point. It makes no sense. It does, too. You just don't want to listen. Richardson again. Not wasting time putting it up, darn it, the rebound. Rondo amongst the league leaders in assists during the playoffs as well. Got a couple of double figure assist games and is rebounding so well. Pierce got hit and a foul. And Paul Pierce is just he's starting to look like the Paul Pierce of old. You haven't really been able to say that much this season. Injuries have been a big part of that. But he looked great the other night. And he's sharp early here. Dr. has touched on it as clearly a foul by Quentin Richardson. As Pierce releases the jump shot. Dawson was touched on that. 
prior to the last game. He says, hey, I used Paul Pierce when he came back from injury as if I was going to use him in playoff situations because I wanted him to, to, to begin to develop a, a, a freshness and a bounce and get back to the old Paul Pierce because we knew that he's our go-to guy. Well, his right knee was sculpted back in December and then fluid drained in February as Perkins blocks Jermaine O'Neal's shot. Rondo comes the other way. He also had a thumb injury, a foot injury. Comes up short that time. He's been banged up for a good part of the season. Wade, the spin move, gets inside, can't finish. Rondo quickly the other way. Allen was open, he didn't see him. Pierce tries the extra pass, deflected out by Beasley. I give Rondo a lot of credit. You're watching him in transition time and again. He could have taken shots, but instead he is trying to get others involved. And when these guys like Garnett and Pierce were injured, he had to put more of a scoring load on his shoulders, and he delivered. But now with everybody back, he knows his role, and I give him credit for giving up of himself for the good of the team. He has been superb no matter what role has been asked of him. There's that foul on Paul Pierce, and let's listen to some coaches' huddles. All right, now, great passion. Stay with the energy, okay? Keep the energy going. When they're doing anything on either end, they're beating you down the floor. They have more energy than you right now, all right? And we're not keeping the game simple. Dwayne Wade made it simple right there. Hard drive, drew the foul, put it in. Doc Rivers was not happy with their defense in game three, despite the victory. Well, I like this. Giving Wade the ball with a head of steam coming right at Ray Allen. Celtics didn't do a good job in shrinking the floor and giving him more than one defender to see. But I like that set for Dwayne Wade with the head of steam. And I think if you're Boston and you see him in that situation time and again, you've got to give earlier help. That foul on Boston against Ray Allen. So Allen picks up two fouls. He'll sit down. Tony Allen comes in, and as we've said, and you mentioned earlier, Tony Allen has been very good off the bench. Seven steals in the first three games. And Glenn Davis also coming in as Perkins takes a breather. 2-3 zone by Miami. Garnett gets it inside. Ball lost by Davis. Still Celtics ball with 14 on the clock. And Miami goes to that 2-3 zone because Tony Allen and Rondo, two, not non-shooters, but mid-range shooters, where they only have to cover, really, Paul Pierce at the three-point line. Rondo finds Allen, who finds the seam. Bad pass from Garnett. That's seven turnovers for the Celtics, and way the finish. Turnovers have hurt the Heat in this series thus far. Right now, it's killing Boston. Give the Miami Heat a lot of credit defensively. They're making extra effort plays. Chasing down loose ball, active hands, and making multiple effort plays. Eight turnovers, and there's still 3.39 to play in the period. Talk about active hands. You see high hands, guys getting involved in the passing lane. Good things happening defensively. You're able to push the ball and get transition back. And that turnover was caused because Tony Allen, instead of being a spot-up shooter in the in the corner where he would have been wide open for a three if that was a Ray Allen, he wants to catch and go. He got his jump on it early, and that led to the turnover. Richardson leans in, draws the foul, count it, and one. Patton Richardson with 13 points here in the first period. He's averaging eight a game in the series, but has exploded out of the game. Well, shows the shot, steps through, takes a, a little bit of a bump, and really that's not his game. His game is not putting up ball on the floor and creating a shot. 
And I love what I just witnessed. Paul Pierce going up to Quentin Richardson on the line and they're trash talking each other. One thing about Quentin Richardson, he's not going to back down from Pierce. I know you're a heck of a player. I know you're a star. But I'm here to fight. I'm going to compete on both ends of the floor no matter what. There's no give right there. He says, look, I'm at the foul line. I just made the basket over you. I know you're the truth, but I also can get it done. What do you think Pierce was saying to he him? Said, he said to him, are you talking to me? That's exactly You read his lips. That's what he said. Because, you know, Quentin Richardson was doing it split, like a split mumbling it. I like that. Well, of course, Richardson called both Pierce as Chalmers gets away from Davis. Way to finish. Richardson had called both Pierce and Garnett actresses that spurred that incident at the end of game one that caused the suspension of Garnett in game two. And Mike, it's the zone that has totally changed the game around again because of only one range shooter on the floor. I like this move by the Miami Heat. Thomas almost the steal on that one. The Celtics call timeout. They have more turnovers than shot attempts. Nine turnovers with still 2.48 remaining here in the opening period. Well, again, 2-3 zone. This is what Chalmers does best. He's a steal guy, and then I like it. Giving it up to Wade and rewarding the star player to make sure he gets off. 9-0 run by Miami. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. The NBA Playoffs on ABC. Brought to you by the Sierra from GMC. Never send a truck to do a Sierra's job. Beautiful afternoon in Miami, Florida. And a beautiful start for the Heat. Up by 12. As Dwayne Wade and the Heat forcing turnovers. Boston shooting 62%, but they can't hold on to the ball. Getting it done on the defensive end. Active hands and then off to the races time and time again. This is the way that the Miami Heat team will give themselves a chance to win and get back in this series defensively. And I love this. Chasing shooters off the screen is not just the guy initially, but you build the wall. Three guys in position off the catch and then multiple effort plays. Getting back into the pitcher. Outstanding job early on for the Heat defensively. Boston struggled with turnovers early in the regular season. They were actually one of the worst in the NBA. Much better second half of the year as Rondo misses that jumper. Wade on the attack drives blocked by Tony Allen and then Wade got hit. And Wade is shaking up a bit on the play. Coach, you talked about something where Chalmers gave the basketball up as we take a look at the block. Wade upset that no call was was made. He taking the basketball back out. But you talked about Chalmers giving up to Wade for the transition dunk. I watched it last night. Westbrook did the same exact thing for Durant. That's what you want to do. Find a way to get your star players a taste of knocking down baskets, whether it be in transition or easy play. And you know what? That's not easy for young players to realize that. I give both these younger guards credit for realizing that situation. Rondo trying to draw the foul. Has one the rebound. Not that way. Wade goes right at Michael Finley, count it, and one. Where well, he continue their assault, they're up by 14. What I love about this, this is almost a running back move. Looked like he's going to go to the middle, crosses over, outstanding job of getting the defense on his heels, and then finish. That doesn't look like a foul there. That looks like a heck of a play by Wade. Michael Finley agrees with you, Mark. Well, Wade will go and get a chance for the three-point play. He was superb in game three with 34 points, eight assists. And this is the largest lead of the series for the Miami Heat. 12 straight points. Bench out there right now, the only starter is Rondo for Boston. Now this is interesting. Going back away from the zone. And I think it's because Paul Pierce is out of the game. So look at that perimeter. There's not one perimeter guy that's going to just take you one-on-one. -on -one. 
And I think the way that they're defending the perimeter guys, they're really zoning them. They're not chasing them out wide. They're playing them in the paint area, forcing these guys to make shots. Tony Allen took a wild shot there. Joel Anthony tracks down the loose ball. The Heat shooting 57% from the field. Wait! Oh, beauty! 31 to 14. Wade with 14. Finley jump shot. Gets it to go. I think Miami should try to re-sign that guy in the offseason. <laughs> well, so much made here in South Florida that with the Heat should lose this game. Will it be Dwayne Wade's final game as a member of the Heat? Allier, ball knocked away. Still loose. Wallace comes up with it. Well, you can't have loose possessions right now. Finley off the mark. Haslam, another mainstay here. He's an unrespected free agent after this season. He's been, as people like to use it to say, the heart and soul for a number of years. I like this. Rather than going two for one, slow it down. Things are a little hectic. Get a quality possession of the Wade steps back. And well short. Shot clock turned off. Richardson with 27 of the 31 points. He'd have a foul to give. And there it is. And of course, that was a big topic after game three, where they had a foul to give, but chose not to foul Paul Pierce. And Eric Spolster said, that's on me. Well, that was his decision not to do it. Darrell Wright did not commit the foul. Maybe if Wade was out there, it's a little different story. Well, I think again, in that situation, you may have different levels of trust in different players to be able to execute a foul to give, which seems simple, but giving it at the right time without allowing the offensive player to get into the act of shooting is a little bit more tricky than it may appear. Well, to me, that's a cop-out. The reason why is because you put yourself in position to be prepared for those moments. As a coach, those are things you work on so that you, you are able to trust five guys on the floor to, to execute the plan. Rondo, final second spins, flips it up at the buzzer, and it floats in. Nice move from Rondo. And what was an otherwise difficult first quarter for Boston. Not so for Dwayne Wade and the Heat. Wade had 14. Quinton Richardson had 13. And most importantly for the Heat, they forced nine turnovers that led to 16 Miami points. It's an elimination game for the Miami Heat. But a strong start. First quarter is done. 13 point lead. Welcome back to Miami where the Celtics are down by 13. Doc, they jumped out on you early. What didn't you like about that, that first quarter? Well, I didn't like anything, really. Uh, I mean, we had no patience on the offensive end. It was like everybody came out offensively to try to make, make a knockout blow by themselves. You got to play together. And defensively, we had no urgency. We, they got the first eight shots with no hands in the face. Big uh, first quarter for Dwayne Wade. You've been talking about your defense against him all series. What do you have to do differently against him? Well, he's Dwayne Wade. You know, um, I'm more concerned really about those other four guys on their team because they're having an impact while Wade is having an impact. And they both can't have one, so we got to stop one or the other. All right, thank you very much, Doc. All right, Lisa, Doc Rivers is one who says let's wrap up the series as quickly as possible. He remembers back in 2003, he was the coach of the Orlando Magic. First round, they were up 3-1 to one against the Detroit Pistons and lost three in a row and lost that series. Granted, it's not 3-0, but he has seen teams come back in a playoff series firsthand. But they were the far superior the team. Pistons the Pistons were. Yeah. That was a championship-level team. And really, only Doc had Tracy McGrady and the modern-day or latter-day Tito's at that time. <laughs> Ray you know, Allen, it's that shot. You know, they just didn't have the depth of talent that, that Detroit had at that time. I think the concern is you don't want to give this Miami Heat team confidence. This is, a, this is a group that's been struggling confidence-wise up until this point. You don't want to give them a bounce and a swagger where they believe that they can make plays and have a chance in this series because they have a star that can take over. Ball kicked out of bounds. Shot clock reset to 14. Here's Dwayne Wade who's sitting right now. Now normally he sits in the second and the third, but 
Those are his numbers in those quarters. Well, yeah, he starts off, his minutes are a little bit less than both the second and the fourth. But those are huge numbers. And I think one of the reasons is, as you saw in the first quarter here, his opportunities in transition diminish over time. And the Royal had to put it up as the shot clock expired. Here's Nate Robinson. He's only played in eight minutes in this series as Davis goes in. And fouled by Haslam. So free throws coming up for Big Baby Davis. Robinson off the bench here as Davis goes to the free throw line. He had that terrific game too when Garnett was suspended. But he is, whether he's scoring or not looking for a shot, he's been very good energy for this team. And I like that play by Nate Robinson right there. In New York, he might have tried to toss that off the backboard and reverse dunk it. <laughs> you don't really know what he was going to do because he was playing for show versus playing for a goal. And here, just a solid, simple, fast break decision that leads to two free throws. And I also like this move by Eric Spolstra about getting the scorer on the floor in Beasley because with Haslam out there and the two point guards, it's just hard to score. And they've worked hard to build up a lead. You don't want to give it back in just a couple minutes. And Haslam also sitting because of two fouls. But they had four other players scoring double figures in game three. That was such a key element in their preparation. Three of them off the bench. Terrell Wright had a terrific game. He had 15. Shot clock down to four. Wright's going to have to put one up. With Wallace in his face, knocks it down. Tough shot for Darrell Wright. And he answers the call. He had a big three in the fourth quarter late in the game. And I'm pressing his best game of the series. He gave them great minutes in game three on both ends of the floor. Did a great job having an impact on the game as soon as he was called. Wallace misses. Davis and Chalmers fight, and good play from Chalmers to take it away. That's a great engaged rebound by Chalmers going up over the top of Big Baby Davis. Chalmers answers back at the other end. Chalmers played well off the bench in game three. He had 10 points. A 13-point Miami lead. They've been up by as many as 17. Robinson bumped by Beasley. That's two on Beasley. And you talk about how you're going to score. Find a way to score. Clock dwindling down. Right elevates over the contested hand of Rasheed Wallace. And then in transition, after getting a big time rebound, Chalmers gets into the seam. The ability to finish over two big. And Rasheed Wallace has got to step up there and be the defender he's been his whole career. He's got to block that shot. Ball knocked off the leg of Robinson. Good hands from Arroyo. And that's the tenth turnover. Nine of them coming in the first. Robinson saying that was a foul. Point guard position has been obviously in favor of the Celtics with Rondo's play. Arroyo and Chalmers both out there together. As Joel Anthony is fouled by Wallace. So Anthony will go to the line. Anthony, one of those just non-stop energy players as we look at the NBA calendar uh, TNT tonight Dallas at San Antonio the Spurs now with a two to one edge there Denver and Utah Jazz could try and take a commanding lead NBA TV uh, Atlanta at Milwaukee and the next Sunday who knows it could be some game sevens it could be some game ones as the 2010 playoffs continue Pierce back in Joel Anthony, 27 years old, wasn't drafted, born and raised in Montreal. He's played for the Canadian national team. Eric Spolstra said he is one of the hardest working players he's ever seen. He didn't really have the skill when he first came into the NBA, but he's worked so hard, he plays so hard, that he's gotten himself minutes. He's a good defender, and he's a good screen setter. And a foul. With 9.08 remaining. Going to go against Joel Anthony, so Wallace will go to the line. Now, Wallace, such an important part coming into the season for this team. He did not have what you would call a good season, but if they have any hopes of still contending and winning a championship, 
And they could really use some consistent play from him, Mark. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Struggled during the course of the year. Didn't bring to the table what they expected. But I, I, I point to baseball. You know, it matters in October. Are you going to find a way to get it done when it matters most? I think people in Boston and around this league will forget if Rasheed Wallace plays big in crucial moments. But up to this point, he's been a disappointment. Well, you look at Wallace here. You look at Vince Carter in Orlando. Shaq in Cleveland. All the top players, Ron Artest of the Lakers on the contending teams. And that's where it's all going to come down to how they perform in the postseason. He's had a quiet one, Wallace had thus far. By the way, you've now done a boxing analogy, a baseball analogy. Very versatile. Thank you very much. I'm glad you noticed. Cricket's next. <laughs> Beasley. Lead back to 14. Here's one of the ball. And his right trying to post him right to the shot in the groin. He's a bit shaken up. He's inadvertent, and Ray Allen was out of bounds when he caught it. 11 turnovers now for the Boston Celtics. And they will have a timeout. Early second quarter. Heat trying to keep their season alive. Oklahoma City Thunder. They swept both games at home and have tied the series at two games apiece with the defending champion Lakers. A pivotal game five in L.A. on Tuesday. Let's send it back now to South Beach. Back in Miami. Three and a half gone by here in the second. The Heat with a 14-point lead. Here in game four, they've had a terrific start. If you look at our Shrek 3D storyline, it's the Western Conference brackets and everybody talking about last night in Oklahoma City. The Thunder just pummeled the Lakers. That series tied at two games apiece. What would you guys think? I thought Oklahoma just took away the will of the Lakers. To me, it was an embarrassing performance by the Lakers. And, 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 and like I said before, if Kobe Bryant doesn't have his foot on the gas pedal, other teams look forward to that. The problem is when he's got it going on in an attack mode, then you have your hands full. There's no answer to it. Other than that, you can beat the Lakers. Well, I think they were in a building that Beasley showed great handles to get to the rim. They were in a building that's the best building in the NBA as far as home court advantage right now in Oklahoma City. And they're playing a very good team. And you know what? They had the same thing happen to them last year where they went on the road to, to Houston, lost both of those games in round two. I just think they just got to play a good home game. Wow, Thomas to Beasley. And Michael Beasley with a strong start. An 18-point heat lead. Beasley picking up where he left off in game three with being aggressive offensively. Wallace against Anthony. Pierce, the offensive board, stripped by Arroyo, but a foul. And Pierce goes to the line. Talk about giving Wade help. How about running the lanes and making plays? Upstairs, alley you pass from Chalmers to Beasley. Outstanding job of executing in transition. And I'm most impressed, not just offensively, but the way that Beasley is playing on both ends of the floor. Defensively jumping out in pick and roll situations, forcing the guy to go around him, paying attention to detail. There's no excuse after this. When you look at film like this, you say, don't tell me you can't play defense. Yeah, and I liked how he was just looking up at his highlight up on the scoreboard, watching his lob, and he got that wry smile like, I'm good. <laughs> Almost like you after you make a good point when you just listen to your own headset. <laughs> that happens so rarely. Here's goes one of two. Well, the Celtics down big early in this one. Last time the Celtics overcame a lead of 17 or more, as Thomas calls a timeout, it was back in 2008, game four of the NBA Finals, when they had that spectacular comeback against the Lakers. They've got a big deficit here in game four. Obviously just the first round, but the Heat, superb to start in this elimination game, 42 to 25. Happy Town, the series premiere on ABC Wednesday at 10, 9 central. A small town with big secrets and a mystery about to be unearthed. 
Welcome to ABC's Happy Town. Don't let the name fool you. Well, needless to say, Doc Rivers not happy with his team start. Let's listen to a recent huddle. If we play together, we're going to win. Everybody wants to win tonight, all right? Everybody. But if you think you're going to do it yourself, that I'm going to make it happen, we're not going to win. We got to do it together, all right? We got to do this together, one basket at a time. Don't overreact to the score, and we got to do our jobs. Come on, guys, you got to do it together. Together, together. Well, he's going to break out in song there at the end. No, that's only if it was Jeff Van Gundy. Would. No, don't they do that on those NBA commercials now, where they take a statement from the press conference, right. and then they are putting it together. Oh, no, 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 no stop, <laughs> stop, please. Can you sing that in tenor? Tenor 15, 15 feet away oh, no. from us. See, I knew that. I know I knew that joke. You're bringing old school jokes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ray Allen has just picked up his third foul, and Michael Beasley continues his aggressive play and as he goes to the free throw line. Eight points for Beasley on four or five from the field. I can't believe you just tried to sing. Your family will be so embarrassed with the idea of you attempting to sing a song. You don't have to be good at something to attempt it. See, you're like the type of guy that you don't want any participants unless you're going to be the best. See, I'm, I'm willing to participate even when Simon, Simon, what's that guy's name? Simon Powell. Powell like, will ridicule me. I'm fine with that. I'm fine. You can be Simon. I'm Theodore. We can arrange to have you audition on that show if you want. I'm going dancing to start. Not to pull up. Back to the 2-3 zone again. There's only one shooter on the floor. Garnett. Garnett, three for three. He's starting to look like the Garnett of all. He granted, he's not going to look like the Garnett of a few years ago, but he's got a nice fluid rhythm going. Well, scoring in the post, also knocking down the mid-range jump shot, and that's when you realize you're getting your legs back. Well, right misses. Joel Anthony, good job on the boards, and Garnett couldn't hold on to it. And I like what Miami's doing tonight against Garnett's show on the high pick and roll. Instead of trying to run Beasley to a spot up position, they're rolling him to the rim, which is creating good shots for he and for the perimeter players. Beasley, nice move, just couldn't finish with the right hand. Rondo, perfect bounce pass to Tony Allen. Oh, that was a beauty. What I love most about that is the way that Allen ran the floor, got rid of the ball, and then full steam ahead, putting himself in position to get it back and knock down the lane. He cut to 14 as we approach the midway point of the second. Chalmers trying to break three. Wade goes back door, goes to the rim. Shot won't go. Anthony fights and saves. Joel Anthony providing that energy. Wade's pass deflected off the rim. Wade trying to throw it off Rondo. Quickly ahead is Tony Allen. Allen will get hit hard by Anthony. Looked like Allen was passing off at the last second as Anthony came in. Allen a little slow to get up. That's a good play to prevent what would have been a layup. Good hustle from Joel Anthony at both ends. The officials discussing. You want to get back into the ball game, this is how. You get the rebound, pushes it, and then look at the sprint. The delivery on point from Rondo and then Allen finishing. But those are the type of plays where you continue to make them. You can get back into the ball game. I think the officials were talking about whether or not it was in the act of shooting, and this is the right call. <laughs> But that is the 15th foul, so he's going to shoot anyway. Quentin Richardson comes back in for Miami. And I also like it, too. It gives Tony Allen the chance to gather himself so the Celtics don't have to take a timeout. Tony Allen back in the rotation. This is his sixth year of first-round pick. Out of Oklahoma State, a late first-round pick. He's had all sorts of injury problems, knee woes early. Last year, he had left thumb surgery this year. He missed a ton of games because of an ankle injury. Only played in 54. When he's been healthy, he's a good, tough, hard-nosed player. A good defender. Not certainly a pure point guard or a shooter. But he plays with a real toughness. 
I like him as a backup point guard. I, I think he's got a good enough handle. He's got speed and quickness and athleticism that when Ron goes out for the few minutes that happens, I think gives them their best chance to win. Chalmers misses. Rondo comes out of the pack. Rondo on the drive. Oh, nice move. Avoiding the contact with Richardson. And then puts it in with the one hand. alley up to Beasley. And they call a foul on for Pierce on the pass. And that's three on Pierce. So Allen and Pierce each with three. Pierce is going to have to sit down as Finley will come back in. Well, this is a good push by Rondo. And then to be able to slide your body right and still finish up over the top, that's just great body control and great touch. I think these are, this is a crucial spurt for the Miami Heat. You build the cushion. The last couple of minutes, bad possessions offensively. You've got to find a way to execute on the offensive end. And don't allow this Celtic team to get back into this ball. You've outplayed them. The last thing you want to do is play so well, get the crowd fired up. And then the lead window looks from high as 17 as Chalmers has it deflected off his leg. That's why I think they're better off putting one four, putting the ball in the hands of Wade, and then getting quality offense with his decision making ability, whether it be for himself or others. But you want to close out this second quarter in the right way offensively. The biggest lead was 18. Hold this call for a more free throws in the penalty. Quentin Richardson calls for it. That, that's a bad foul in the penalty. That leads to a really good free throw shooter getting two free throws. Finley will go to the line. Finley signed by the Celtics after being let go by the San Antonio Spurs. Well, to be fair, he, he asked out. Right. He wanted out, and they granted it to him. Finley knows Doc Rivers a long way back. They're both from Chicago. Both went to the same high school, Proviso East. In fact, one of the cheerleaders on Doc Rivers' is team in high school was Michael Finley's sister. He remembers Finley coming to all the games as a little kid. And Finley, of course, wants a great score. Now a little helper off the bench, and they just love his character, especially for the younger players. That's the free throw there to make it a nine-point game. Celtics have scored nine in a row after being badly outplayed for much of the half. They're creeping back into it. NBA Game Time Playoff Edition, the official mobile app of the NBA. Log on now to NBA.com backslash game time for up-to-date playoff highlights, scores, schedule, stats, scenarios, and more. Candy Fest here in the American Airlines Arena. I couldn't eat all that. Like I could only do a half a half a stick. Then or, or I'd get sick when I was a kid. I think I'd get sick on the first bite, but they love it. I would love to see you and Stan as kids sharing <laughs> cotton candy together. You know, my mom, she had the greatest it was, it was cut and choose. Somebody cut, the other one chose. Like, you know, so it was gonna be even. Brilliant parents. I can't imagine what Bill and Sidney had to go through all those years. Under five to play first half here in game four. Nice entry pass and Wade able to put it in. Good job out of the timeout executing a play where you get yourself a quality look. And that's usually for a big man. That duck in by Wade is something that if you run for big guys, they're putting him in the post against Tony Allen. Chalmers got his hands on it, but it deflected right to Finley. Garnett's jump shot, short. Wade, a strong first half double, nearly stolen by Allen. Almost stolen again by Allen. They've been hawking defensively. That ball almost came in our lap, uh, Mark. Mike Green flinched. He thought Tony Allen was coming into his lap. He was not ready to take the charge. Rondo almost with the steal. Yes, he comes up with it. Rondo gets inside and banks to the left. And then Anthony fouls him. And Rondo is down. And there was a collision that pushed Joel Anthony into Rondo. 
Rondo made a terrific play to get the steal and then got bumped as he was just coming to the basket right before he put up the shot. And then Anthony, as you said, caromed in on. There's the push. And Wade, Wade almost pushed Anthony into him. Oh, boy, hit his back hard. And I think Tony Allen bumped Wade. And Wade then pushed Anthony. So the Celtics doctors and medical crew out there to see Rondo. Rondo, who is fearless, going to the basket, fearless, trying to get rebounds inside, playing with the big guys down low. You see that awkward land. And Mike, this is why you want to play as few as games as possible in the playoff. Because you're trying to avoid playing extra games just because of the possibility of injury. Well, Rondo gets up. Now looks okay. As Eddie Lassert, the longtime trainer, helps him off the floor. Brought to you by Denny's. Isn't it time for a serious breakfast? Denny's. Real breakfast. 24-7. And the all-new 2011 Super Duty. Built for tough. Not everyone in Miami here at the arena. Some on the beach as the Heat lead 45-36. And good to report Rondo was fine and will stay in the game. Rondo, of course, such an important part of this team. His players, teammates love him, including Paul Pierce. He reminds me a lot of Jason Kidd uh, when he was younger, how, you know, if it wasn't his scoring, he dominated you with his passing and his rebounding, with his steals, his defense. And, and Rondo uh, can do that. Uh, you know he's, he's going to pass the ball, and, but it's the other little things that he does so well that, that really go unnoticed. Uh, just the ball pressure, uh, getting some loose balls, uh, Offensive rebounder, you know, for a guy in size, uh, I don't think there's nobody in the league like that. And he's still only 24 years old. In that first year, he had his ups and downs. His second year, the big question could the Celtics win a championship as Rondo is the point guard? Will he answer those questions? Last year, he had that spectacular playoff series, nearly a triple double against Chicago, as Beasley shot his block. And then this year, Rondo's become an all star. Makes his move inside, nearly stolen. Lost it, they say last touch by Wade. Wade's not arguing that much, so I think it's the right call. Jermaine O'Neal back in for Miami. Garnett, good open look. And Wade the rebound. Hoping to get something from O'Neal offensively. Richardson had the hot start. O'Neal lost the ball. Wow, he's struggling big time. Perkins barrels into Wade. That's taking a charge. Good Kendrick Perkins knocks him down with a turnover, and that's number 12 for Boston. And I'm watching the Miami Heat offensively right now. And one of the things that's glaring is Rondo is a designated guy to roam around. So he's not defending Mario Chalmers. He's looking to double team whoever catches the basketball. If you're Chalmers, you have to be aware of that and put yourself in position to be aggressive and score the basketball. You cannot allow Rondo to be a roamer. And you've got to give it up to Dwayne Wade. He's not going to take a ton of charges during the season because he has to pace his body. It, can, it only has so many physical contacts that you can take in a season. But here in the playoffs, stepping in front, give him credit. Very few star players do that. Rondo looking. Garnett. Oh, nice move from Garnett. A little head fake to get through the double team. And if I'm Miami, Mark, I'm thinking about going back to the 2-3 zone. They only have Finley on the, on the floor as a shooter, trying to get out more in transition because right now they're really struggling to get quality shots. They've had some droughts as Wade tried the finger roll and draws the foul. Much to the dismay of Perkins. 
Wade will shoot his third and fourth free throws of the game. Well, Garnett goes into his move. He spins back, gives a little shake, and then steps through. That's very good post patience by Garnett. I like that last decision. Put the ball in the hands of Wade and allow him to be in an attack mode. It's better because he can read the double teams in a situation and find guys that are being left alone. Heat struggling at the line. Coming up at halftime, Stuart Scott, John Barry, Magic Johnson, Michael Wilbon will have the T-Mobile halftime report. Magic will talk about the Lakers' concerns. That series with the Thunder tied at two apiece. They'll analyze the first half. We'll go through the NBA playoffs. Lots to talk about. As Ray Allen and Paul Pierce remain on the bench for the Celtics with three fouls apiece, yet Boston's chipped away at this lead, and Wade misses both free throws. Rondo is their leading scorer with nine. The ball fake back to Garnett. Garnett's now the leading scorer with ten, and it's a five-point game. Celtics trail by as many as 18 at one point. What's Doc Rivers yelling about? He wants the help to come a little bit earlier. See how Rondo is coming up. Because really, who's on the floor shown the knack right now for scoring the ball? Right. Wild shot as Perkins defends it beautifully. Finley fires a three. Garnett the rebound, the touch pass. And Rondo tiptoes the baseline. On the drive, Rondo won't go. Wade for three. And clearly the rebound. Wade, 7 of 13 from the field, 16 points to lead all scores. Celtics looking to go pick and roll, putting KG in position to pick and pop. Barnett wide open. Can't get that one to fall. Final minute, first half. Wayne Wade and the Heat trying to extend their season. Trying to get on a plane, go back to Boston for game five. Wade, nice fake. Easily not expecting it. O'Neal, and there's a high percentage shot. Romaine O'Neal gets one to go. Richardson on Rondo. Now they switch. Perkins is open. Ball swings. Shot clock winding down. Allen drives in. Blocking foul as O'Neal is in the restricted area. Tony Allen strong to the basket. And a chance for a three-point play. Celtics doing a good job of moving the basketball, trusting one another, and then Allen. Great job in the first half. Pierce, Allen in foul trouble. Well, Tony Allen has stepped up on both ends of the floor and gotten it done. And you talk about star players excited about other guys stepping up and fulfilling a role while Pierce on the bench, giving his guy an ovation. Allen had 14 points in game one. As you said, he's amongst the playoff leaders in steals. Had seven through the first three games. And Boston can cut it. To four after trailing by 18 here in the first half. The Heat going through those offensive drops that scored just four points in the last seven and a half minutes. Beasley the drive. And still, do they call a foul? Yes, Billy Kennedy says. So Beasley will shoot two. And you think about it, the Celtics. Trapping Dwayne Wade in the backcourt. If I'm one of the other four guys on the heat, I'm excited about that because you're basically disrespecting me. Put yourself in position to catch the ball and make a play. And that's what the Heat guys have to do. You can't just trust that Dwayne Wade is going to beat double coverage. His job is to make a play. He's done his job when you double team him in the backcourt. And I also like Beasley attacking Garnett's feet. Don't feel like you can't put it on the ground and go at a really good defender. See if he can move his feet, attack him, and try to get to the basket. Doc Rivers uses his 22nd timeout. Still has 3.7 
remaining to get off a quality shot down the other end. You take a look out of bounds there trapping Dwayne Wade. Well, somebody else has got to make a play. I've done my job. I love what he does. Get rid of the basketball. And Beasley does a good job, like you said, coach, of attacking Kevin Garnett, putting himself in position to get the foul and get to the line. The well, Celtics have been able to cut an 18-point lead to four moments ago. It's now five with 3.7 seconds remaining. And Beasley going to the free throw line. Here's comes back in as does Allen for this final play down the other end after the free throw. And I like the move of getting these guys back into the ball game. 3.7 seconds to go in the half. You never know. You want to lose them by one or two. Well, it could make a difference. The last possession of a half. Beasley hits the pair. Rondo final seconds. Rondo races up the floor. Just gets it off in time. <laughs> gets stuck. And that will end the first half. A good ending for the Celtics. 18 6 run over the last seven and a half minutes. How many halves do you think in NBA history <laughs> have ever ended with the ball getting stuck? A think of the same thing. Now, if play, if it wasn't the end of the half, they'd have a jump ball. But that's the way the, <laughs> the, way the half ends. Dwayne Wade and the Heat, though, lead by six. Wade is with Lisa. Thank you, Mike. Dwayne, you guys had an 18-point lead. They've cut it to six. What changed for you guys in that quarter? Um, they, they start scoring off our turnovers. We turned the ball over too many times, and um, that's how they've been killing us in the series a lot. It was on the transition point, so we got to do a better job of taking care of the ball and getting shots. You had 14 points in the first quarter, just two in the second quarter. You missed a couple free throws. For you personally, what do you have to get back to? Oh, I'm not worried about myself. Uh, you know, I can get hot. Um, I'll need to see the ball go in the basket once. So, um, you know, the, the first quarter I came out um, aggressive like I did last game. Second quarter, I'm a little bit more passive as well. But um, I'm not worried about myself. I want to continue to make sure my teammates get good shots, and um, I'll be fine. All right. Thanks, Dwayne. Thank you. Mike. All right, Lisa Dwayne Wade, trying to make sure this is not the final game of the season for the Miami Heat. And perhaps his final game as a member of the Heat. He's a free agent, but he's not worried about that right now. Came out with a vengeance. They went up by 18. As the T-Mobile Halftime Report's coming up next, Magic Johnson will talk about the Lakers' concern. And first half analysis of Game 4. Suffolk's with a 3-0 lead in this series, trying to go for the sweep. Good comeback in the second quarter. It's a six-point game at halftime.